happening right now on News in Africa. Channel 405 is your news at Prime, and we continue with your reporting. As mentioned earlier on, it's been a few weeks since U.S. Ambassador to South Africa, Lana Marx, started her duties. She replaced Patrick Gaspard, who left the post in 2017. Now, the ambassador joins me now to discuss some of her priorities. Ambassador, it's good to see you. Thank you very much for having me on your show this evening. I'm greatly honored. It's taken a whole year, but finally you are here. Why has it taken so long? Yes. Actually, it was uh, November 2016 that I became President Trump's candidate. So it's two, more than two and a half years. I had traveled so extensively, and the vetting process is very thorough in the United States. So it took quite a long time, but finally I made it. Are you worried at all that uh, you're coming in uh, when his term is coming to an end in about 12 months or so? No, not at all, because I'm fortunate to be here in the presidency and administration of President Ramaphosa, so everything is incredibly positive. I'm hitting the ground running, and we have so much to do, and I'm very excited. Why do you believe you are the best lady for the job? Well, I'm very fortunate to have been born and raised in South Africa, yes. and I feel that gives me a tremendous advantage. You have a cabinet who is 50% woman. I'm a woman, so I greatly appreciate that, your new cabinet. I've been involved in Harvard's Kennedy School of Government uh, with women's leadership, so from that perspective as a woman, I want to bring something to the table with women's empowerment as well. Um, my greatest desires are to increase trade and investment in South Africa exponentially, not interested in being number three, number one only, and I want to get epidemic control for AIDS and HIV. We fund the largest amount of any foreign nation. Since 2004, we have funded 9.4 billion US dollars together with the South African government. Just this coming up year alone, Congress has generously uh, donated Nine, 752 million US dollars, almost 11 billion rand, to assist South Africa so we can get epidemic control. So I'm going to look at this very closely and work on this closely. And again, youth issues are very, very important to me and close to my heart. Some in South Africa might, at this particular point, be really upset with President Donald Trump following his tweet in August last year around uh, the situation of uh, the killings on uh, the farms. Does he still hold that view uh, as well, he relooked his information? May I inter interpret a little bit of that? In the United States, we enjoy South African wines, South African citrus. So when we hear killings on South African farms, it is something visual to us, and even though it's 1% it's of the overall murders in South Africa, all murders are unacceptable. It's something that's visual to us that we can actually see because we enjoy the produce so much. Now you have the Ramaphosa administration who inherited this horrible problem, and he's really working hard to address it. So we look forward to the numbers going down in the future, the crime, the murder numbers going down in the farms as well, because we really, we really don't want those folks to suffer. And we want a climate for magnificent trade and investment. Mm. Uh, 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 you spoke to the Daily Maverick uh, uh, earlier on in the month, and they said uh, the President of the United States is still uh, looking at the situation uh, when it comes to uh, the, those reports around farms being taken away yes. from, from white people. We're so. pleased there's a transparent process going on at the moment, and of course we, we're watching it constantly, of course. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of the other issues that are going to be a little bit sticky. The issue of a go, right? We've got the poultry farmers uh, in South Africa making a whole lot of uh, U.S. chickens into the country, and government decided, okay, maybe we must put some tariffs on, and this ended up uh, with the U.S. issuing a threat that we might be actually kicked out of Agoa. Yes. Um, at the moment, the poultry imports from the United States into South Africa have actually increased. It's above the quota, so we're delighted about that. It is one of the prerequisites of Agoa. I see everything working positively at the moment, so I don't see any 
rise for concern. In normal trade agreements, there's always noise. There's this person dissatisfied, there's this person dissatisfied, but action speaks louder than words, and everything is on track at the moment. But you don't see cause for concern with some of the farms that have been closed, some poultry farms that have been closed in South Africa, and some of the, uh, uh, the, the, the workers there that uh, were employed actually do not have uh, a place of employment at this We point. are very interested in dramatically increasing trade and investment in South Africa, and I give you an example with the Ford motor plant that opened just recently, 6.7 thousand more jobs with the supply chain of the motor industry. This alone could lead to 70 thousand more jobs in South Africa. We want to greatly increase our relationship. We want to have a tremendous amount of more jobs for South Africans. And in the same token, in the United States, we really want to greatly increase our trade now yeah. together. Imposition of tariffs on steel. I think you, you guys in the state, you say aluminum. We say it's aluminium uh, here in <laughs> South Africa. Um, uh, any, any chance of easing on those tariffs? Um, we have to consider our national security. We have to consider that in aspects of our local production. And each, um, in, each individual has been considered on a case-by-case -case basis. The majority of cases, the vast majority of cases have already been granted. I believe 53% of cases that have been applied have been, a grant, have been granted tariff-free. Only a tiny fraction, I think 2%, have been turned down. And the, the, the figures for South Africa have actually greatly increased in the last year, the dollar figures optimistic on a case-by-case -case basis that this is progressing positively. Yeah. This is, I think it's not known. Yeah. I just think these facts yeah. and figures are not known. No, no. The steel industry is battling, though, and, and you know that the focus for South Africa is industrialization. So we want to open these big factories. We want to be able to uh, sell steel. We want to be able to build cars and, and, and all yes. that. But uh, as you're talking to me now, a plant in, in South Dana in the Western Cape is actually shutting down because it's it's just difficult for the steel industry at this point in South Africa. And any 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 ease in the tariff will certainly help. Yes, yes, yes. As I can say, the majority of cases have already been approved on a case-by-case -case basis. I urge the other um, individuals to put their case forward to the United States, and as long as they're reasonable and meet our requirements, I'm sure they'll be mostly approved. Yeah. So let's talk then about the, the, the South African vote at the, the UN Security Council. That is also a sticking point, and it has come onto the news again. What's the position of the US? Um, we're thrilled with the new women's issues that have been brought forward um, by, your, by Naledi Pando, your new foreign minister. We're just thrilled with that. We look forward to our cl clearly increasing our robust relationship together to have communication on all the issues. We do have a lot of communication. We hope to increase that communication on both sides so there's greater understanding all around. And I think that's going to solve a lot of things. All right. Uh, President Donald Trump, hasn't been to Africa, oh, no. actually, in his administration, hasn't I set know. foot at all, and it feels to Africa as if he's just decided to ignore us. Well, you know, in November um, of 2016, I've been able to share that he shared personally with me, and I'm happy to reveal it, how beautiful and how wonderful he thought Cape Town was. So I'm happy to share that with you. And now it's my greatest wish to bring him to South Africa. I know that he has been waiting for my vetting process to go through. Um, he really had hoped it would be in early 2017. I think he was, you know, hoping it would go through then. Unfortunately, I've traveled so extensively throughout the world that they had to vet me everywhere. And, but finally, I'm here. And let's, let's move forward positively in that direction. It's my greatest wish. I think he would just love South Africa. Let's clear another issue. And, 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 and I know the media has been rather brutal in terms of the analysis that they give to you uh, and why you were chosen uh, for this position. They say apparently you funded uh, his campaigns. That's the only reason why you've been selected as, as ambassador? I have had a very nice acquaintance with President Trump and his family for 23 years. He knows how I do things. He's aware of my style and my professionalism and many aspects of me. He knows I started my business from my kitchen table in Miami and I developed it into a US business, a global business. So he sees, he's all about business, he's all about trade. Um, I'm a problem solver. 
And I think he sees this as a great advantage, more of an advantage than having government experience per se. He knows my leanings towards women's empowerment, having been involved in the Harvard Leadership Board, Kennedy School, having represented the United States with women's leadership internationally, being involved with Georgetown University, many aspects of women's leadership, women's empowerment. He feels United States in our relationship with South Africa yeah. and also gender-based violence and, and issues like other things he felt would be an asset um, for our relationship with South Africa, not least of which born and raised in South Africa. Yeah, okay. Thank you. And, the, and having and, a little and, advantage. And the fact that you, you I mean, uh, compared to uh, a number of, of, of the guys that come from the club, you're apolitical. Uh, I am but, apolitical, and I've got a magnificent bipartisan support, right. which is unusual. And uh, you don't think the fact that you do not have diplomatic experience is going to stand in your way at all? I think that's an advantage. I think also the fact that I, I know South Africa and that I've traveled so greatly internationally. I've done business with China. I've done business extensively with the Middle East. I've done business in Europe. I've done business right around the United States, which is not for the faint of heart, I can tell you. I've also set up the entire supply chain in my business myself. Every aspect of negotiation of my business, both in the United States and globally, I did myself, and so um, President Trump feels this is a great advantage. All right, let's talk a little bit then about uh, the impeachment that is currently going on, because everybody's watching that, everybody's looking at it, yes. and they're a little bit worried about this call that happened between President Trump and the, the president of, of the yes. Ukraine. I mean, what do you make of okay. what, is, what is happening? Uh, any uh, fears about him being impeached? Uh, and what, what do you make generally <clears throat> of the call? Uh, yes, President Trump yes. has described it as a very good court. So may I go back and say that for two years we had collusion, collusion, collusion. All the media, he colluded, he colluded, he colluded. We had this very robust investigation. We have a fantastic democracy as you do in South Africa. Huge investigation and in the end there was zero. Here we have another situation, big investigation. Hearsay upon hearsay upon hearsay. From what I gather, the call was a positive call. Do I know everything? Of course not. But we have. What is disappointing is that President Trump is achieving so much for our country at the moment. The unemployment in the United States is almost the lowest in history, and certainly in modern times. Our, our economy is the most outstanding economy globally. And it's no small thanks to this incredible president. He's working so hard to do all these incredible things for our country. And now all we hear is all this stuff going on again. Yeah. His whole uh, outlook on, on President Cyril Ramaphosa has also come uh, into the spotlight. What is his view of President Cyril Ramaphosa well, you and know his they, leadership? Yes. I know they, 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 know they met other. for the first time under... Uh, awkward circumstances because of that tweet in August, but they ended up uh, going to play golf together and they, they kind yes, of Yes, they out. know each other, yeah. and I think they really have a tremendous chemistry. Um, both are fantastic business people, both are golfers. I think there's an understanding right away, and from what I believe, they know each other well, there's tremendous chemistry there. I've got a mandate to go forward in the most positive way. President Trump is thrilled that I'm here. Congress is thrilled that I'm here. Every government agency that I met with in my huge briefings the last three weeks, once I was approved by unanimously by the Senate, has been positive. What can we do? Contact us on any front. So I really look forward going positively on behalf of President Trump and on behalf of Congress and the State Department and the peoples of the United States. What Mark said, positive message all in all. I mean, let's um, uh, all round, just to sum it up, if you were to sum up what one or two things that you gonna prioritize that could possibly help uh, in turning around the, the economic situation in South Africa right now. 
I want to bring a tremendous amount of private investment. That's why I brought my trip forward. I attended the convention that we just had, the African International Forum. It was extraordinary. Many of our senior folks were here. I engaged with them. We have the Prosper Africa program. I think that we're going to be able to greatly increase uh, investment trade in South Africa. And I think we're going to be able to increase jobs, a large amount of jobs and help with the unemployment situation in South Africa, help with the youth, help with the poverty. I want to be on the ground. I've had a very, very busy first 10 days, but as of next week, I'm going to start visiting some of our PEPFAR HIV sites. I want to go into the townships. I want to see things on the ground because then I can report back quickly, warp speed, what we can do to help. So from that perspective, it's terribly important to me and to the American people, and I know particularly to the president. And then we have some extraordinary things planned, um, which are on the foundation level for women's empowerment on things we want to work with between the United States and South Africa. And again, the youth, again, empowerment, but also assisting with the unemployment. And then we have got this massive surge in funds from Congress, bipartisan support, unusual. $152 million. So I'm going to really look at this, so work together very closely with South Africa to get epidemic control. These three are my initial um, ideals. We do have other things in mind, which will be very positive for both. Ambassador Landmarks, much appreciated. Thanks for coming through. Thank you. Is, Thank you uh, so much. U.S. Ambassador to South Africa, Landon Marx, with us today, outlining what are his key priorities as he takes office in Pretoria. Let's take a break. Your reporting continues on the news feed, uh, or rather on News at Prime, after this.